Kingdom Hearts series has enjoyed phenomenal success on the PlayStation 2. When it comes to other platforms, it's been spotty. Square Enix and Disney are giving it another shot with Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days for the Nintendo DS. Though it's still largely a retread, the inclusion of multiplayer helps its case. Isn't enough to give this fairy tale a happy ending. <laughs> While it does its best to work as an isolated story, one of the biggest issues with 358 over 2 days narrative is that it requires familiarity with the previous games. It doesn't ruin the experience if you aren't, but you'll get more out of the plot if you're already up to speed. Whether or not you know Kingdom Hearts though, you'll wonder why the heroes gather to eat ice cream at the end of every mission. It's obviously fan service of the most indulgent sort, but aren't there better ways to explore these characters? Silliness aside, the story isn't half bad. It focuses on the origin story of Roxas, one of the main characters from Kingdom Hearts 2. You'll learn how he formed a friendship with fellow organization members Axel and Shion, and watch the trio unravel the truth behind their connection to Sora from the original game. It hits some rather cliche notes at times, but it still manages to avoid becoming too convoluted like its predecessors. It also flows especially well, given the fractured nature of the game's campaign. Man, time flies. Three five eight over two days strays a bit from the traditional Kingdom Hearts formula. Rather than freely exploring vast worlds based on popular Disney films, you'll operate out of a hub and pick from a handful of missions to tackle one at a time. Some are obligatory and advance the story, while others are strictly optional. Though this is clearly an attempt to change things up, the structure is uneven. The early part of the game serves as a glorified tutorial which drags on much longer than it has to. Once you get over the hump though, things pick up and improve. The mission setup lets you play in short bursts, which helps keep the experience fresh. But it comes at the price of scale. The environments you explore can be pretty small. On top of that, all of the worlds are rehashes from the original Kingdom Hearts. Still, there's a good bit of variety in terms of what you're doing. Some missions are combat heavy, while others might focus on conducting recon. And platforming is a recurring element, of course. Previous Kingdom Hearts games caught heat about how they handled skilling up and leveling. 358 over two days streamlines the process with its panel system, which is incredibly simple to manage so long as you don't forget to do some basic upkeep. If you do, the game could become needlessly challenging. The biggest addition to the series is without a doubt the multiplayer option. Though the story mode is strictly one player, there's a mode that lets you replay missions with up to three friends locally, either cooperatively or competitively. Though it's unfortunate that there's no online support, the local multiplayer works quite well, delivering a fast-paced experience that will extend the game's shelf life a good bit. The story mode will take you around 25 hours to play through, though if you factor in multiplayer and unlock all the hidden characters, you can easily spend upwards of 40. Ultimately, 358 over two days successfully riffs off the established Kingdom Hearts formula, over long tutorial and all. <laughs> Like the other titles in the series, 358 over two days is heavy on the action with real-time combat and some light platforming. Though you might get annoyed with the watered-down controls in the earlier segments of the game, it's not long until you unlock your full combat capabilities. For the most part, fighting is fast and fun. It's just a matter of getting to the point where it's firing on all cylinders. Combat primarily revolves around attacking with your various keyblades, casting spells, and using items. Stringing together blows to form combos is the name of the game, but battles aren't strictly offensive, as you'll also need to master defensive maneuvers like dodging and parrying if you want to win. Toggling between your active menu to cast spells or use items isn't the most intuitive system in the heat of battle, but there are shortcut commands to remedy that. The floaty jumping mechanics take a little getting used to, but just like the combat, it all clicks once your movement abilities are in place. Before you know it, you'll be air dashing, high jumping, and gliding like the best of them. One thing that will make getting around a bit more difficult is the wonky camera angles. While you have several manual and automatic options at your disposal, there's the occasional instance where you'll go dizzy trying to focus in on your target. Aside from a few hiccups, the controls and mechanics in 358 over two days are spot on. It's just getting over that initial hump that's a drag. Three Five Eight over two days easily has some of the best 3D visuals of any title on the platform. Though some of the locales are recycled from previous games, it's still an impressive achievement overall. The only real issue here is with some of the CG cutscenes, which weren't compressed very well and look out of place. The soundtrack borrows heavily from previous Kingdom Hearts games with scant few original compositions. 
They're still up to the task, but a little originality would have been welcome. And though the majority of the dialogue is presented in written format, there are a few instances of fully voiced sequences, which are done quite well. A new comrade has been chosen to wear the coat. Though Kingdom Hearts fans might be put off by some of the ways that 358 over 2 days alters the structure, the underlying game is faithful to its legacy and jam-packed with content. Once the experience moves past its plodding early paces, it's great fun.